Welcome to part three of my PC build. I have started to get parts in and I am going to take my first attempts at actually bending PETG tubing today. Got my cheap Amazon heat gun, got my bulk amount of tubes from China, and I'm ready to get my bend on and get frustrated with myself. But first, I do need to install the radiators and fans to the actual case itself. So I'm gonna get started doing that. So I now have the radiator, the three fans for just the water cooling, as well as the Peltier heat sink and its fan as well. So now that these are at least mounted up, I can kind of mock up where the rest of the stuff is gonna go. I need to mount two tubes and I'm gonna mount the pump right about here. Now to get my reservoirs lined up properly, I would like to have them directly on top of each other. This one's going to be the hot water reservoir and this one's going to be the cool water reservoir. And I'd like to have them kind of centered, but there's no holes to do so, so I will have to bust out the old drill and bits. Now for the sake of not having to measure 45 times and cut 1,000, I'm going to wait for the motherboard because while I've determined the center of where I need to be, I don't know where the actual height of the CPU block is gonna be. So I want that to run kind of parallel with the top of that tube because the water cooling and the CPU block are both gonna feed into the hot water tube. The hot water tube's gonna come out, up, and in and then it's going to come out, down, and into this one. Then this one's going to go out to the pump and then so on and so forth through the rest of the system. So I cannot really proceed much more than this until I have the motherboard. So I got some parts in the mail. I got the graphics card, which I'm running the Radeon 5700 XT Nitro Plus. It's decent, it's not bad. So in sticking with using nothing but crosshair motherboards, I went for this one. I was gonna go for the formula, but the pointless VRM water cooling kind of turned me off from that, especially with a $300 price difference between the two. So went with this one. Also copped a Ryzen 9 3900X. So pretty pumped on that as well. I also got a bunch of my AliExpress Bixky water block for the CPU, Bixky water block for the graphics card. So I can actually start plumbing all these hard lines. Sick. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff thrown onto the old chassis here. So I got the motherboard installed, went on without a hitch. I installed the graphics card tray and backplate for that. Also installed my Bixky water cooling plate, which literally fits by millimeters. So if you do want to get one of those Bixky CPU coolers, then it will fit on an Asus Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi. Now all I need to do is take apart my graphics card and put on the Bixky water block to that, mount that up, and then I should at least be able to plumb a good chunk of the system.
water block installed to the graphics card, got the fittings on the graphics card, got the fittings on the CPU block, and got the fittings on the radiator. It's time to try and bend my first piece of PETG tubing. Sick. And there we have it. This is officially my first bend in PETG. And as you can see, it's not quite 90, but luckily I'm just coming into this very tip, so I'm gonna cut most of that off. Anyway, yeah, that took a lot longer than I thought it would to actually heat the tubing up. So onwards and upwards. I've made myself a candy cane. Time for bend number three. Sure. And as you can see, my first attempt at doing a triple bend did not work out so well. I am a centimeter short, as you might say. Time to start over. I actually really enjoyed bending all of this tubing. It was a little bit relaxing, very tedious. Each bend took about five minutes to heat up. Then, if you got it wrong, you again had to start over and there are a lot of bends on this particular build. All in all, I'm definitely glad that I learned how to do PETG tubing. Would I do it again in the future? Probably. The end build of this PC actually has a hybrid of PETG and flexible tubing. So not in this particular instance of it, but in the future I will have moved to that as both of my reservoirs started leaking and I literally had to change everything again. Anyway, I got all of the PETG that I could routed and decided to hook up all of the electronics so that I could see that rainbow puke go. And boy, was it worth it. Go, rainbow puke. Go, you beautiful, beautiful bastard. I got most of the fittings on and now I'm going to try and fill it for the first time with a little bit of distilled water. See if there's any leaks. If there's no leaks then I'm going to go ahead and do the system prep and see how it goes.
So I left the loop for 12 hours with the system prep and now I am starting to fill it with the green coolant. Now I just gotta let this run for a bunch of time, get all the air bubbles out, and then I can finally start buttoning everything up. Now time to fix the rat's nest of wiring that I have in the back of this thing. See if it turns on. And first boot is successful. Time to install Windows. Once I got Windows installed and up and running, I opened up the Armory Crate, which is pre-installed when you actually boot up the computer for the first time. This would become one of the banes of my existence later on, and is basically impossible to reinstall unless you do a complete wipe and reinstall of Windows, which is complete BS considering this was like a $500 motherboard. Thanks, Asus, for basically ruining my faith in you forever. Anyway, with the Armory Crate actually working, I was able to get this really, really awesome light show that you see going on where it has the kind of flickering green, which matched my coolant really well, and I loved the way that it looks. Unfortunately, I cannot get that anymore because their software is garbage. Needless to say, I really, really, really loved doing this project. I loved the way that it worked, and I only have a few more things to get this thing mounted up on the wall and looking beautiful. Finally got her mounted on the wall. Time to turn it on.
right, so we got her all booted up, running on both monitors, got the VR set up. Now I'm just waiting on some furniture so I can put the TV over here and actually use my driving simulation rig. Uh, but I'm pretty stoked on the outcome so far. It looks good up there. Pumped.